It's just me, and then you get your coffee. So, <laughs> but you <le> <coughs> you'll have to earn your coffee by listening to this talk. Uh, so, uh, actually, I can't resist making a joke. Like the, the previous author say, the pre you know, Laura said that uh, she was not really the author of the work. And I, I suspected that all four people associated with this talk uh, will claim <laughs> the same thing. It has nothing to do with me. Uh, it, it's a joke. Uh, no, we are all uh, very proud of this work. So what, what uh, uh, I want to do is um, um, give you <laughs> some, uh, some information about uh, uh, this work we did uh, on uh, uh, realizing networks on, on practice smart products. Uh, well, basically, th this was a, a EU-funded project called Funnily Enough Smart Products. And uh, the key goal was essentially to develop new technologies which allowed um, uh, products to cooperate uh, in, in an intelligent way and in, um, in a way which exceeded a number of uh, characteristics like proactiveness and in a way which also made, of course, the, the life for users um, much, uh, um, much easier. So basically, uh, at the very beginning of the project, we came up with a number of um, desiderata or kind of requirements for the kind of things that um, smart products should, uh, should possess. And actually, you know, the list is much longer than that one. Uh, the, the, the key ones really have to do either with uh, um, ability to reason uh, about the world and ability to store and acquire knowledge and ability, of course, to interact with, um, um, with, other, um, with other users. So um, I, in this talk, I will focus primarily on the epistemological elements. But of course, you can uh, find in the literature quite a few papers about the HCI issues to do with smart products. For example, the ability to sm smart products to adapt to different types of users and to different types of communications, to different types of modalities. So in particular, uh, from an epistemological point of view, we, you know, if a product has to be smart uh, and we want the product to have knowledge of the world, then basically this product needs to be able to, to actually store, acquire, and reason uh, 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 with different types of knowledge, including its own, uh, uh, its own life history. Uh, for example, a nice example we had in the project was to do with uh, assembly lines in the uh, in, uh, manufacturing industry where these products go through a big life cycle. It actually makes a huge difference if actually they know what they've, they've gone through. Um, the, another important thing was these things about proactiveness, and this is really where I will spend more or less all, uh, all of my talk. Um, we don't just want... Uh, um, products that are passive, that react, that they can provide information uh, if you ask a query. But we, we want uh, products, uh, uh, we wanted to characterize uh, such a products uh, as agents able to anticipate needs um, in a number of different scenarios. And uh, another key thing, because we are not interested in, uh, in the standalone product, we are not interested in um, you know, the intelligent uh, pen that uh, allows me to do something but just in, in, you know, with that particular pen. We are just in products which typically are part of an ambience, which can be at work, can be in your home, uh, or can also be a dynamic ambience, for example, smart products uh, in a car, which might interact with other smart products in the environment as you drive along. So a key, a key requirement for, uh, for our work was everything had to be um, open and uh, self-organizing with, no, um, with no controller. So as I said, I, I want uh, uh, primarily to focus on, uh, uh, on modern proactive knowledge. Uh, and of course, we all, I guess we, we all know uh, intuitively what, uh, what we mean by proactive. Uh, in fact, if you look at the dictionary, uh, proactive uh, um, means um, um, acting in anticipation of a need. That is, uh, uh, so the, the query example is, is a good one. If I have a query to a database, I ask a query and the database gives me an answer, uh, that's, you know, if the answer is correct, it's good, but it's not exactly proactive. You know, what is interesting is, uh, is products that give you maybe an answer, that give you s uh, some information, uh, just before you, you may need it. So let's, uh, let's try to, to uh, be a little bit more specific about this notion of proactivity. Um, and uh, let, uh, let me give you a few uh, examples of uh, uh, devices and, and try to characterize the difference between proactive uh, and non-proactive devices. In fact, for those of you who were at ECO two years ago, actually they can recognize this slide, <laughs> which is another example of reuse across ECOs. Uh, and uh, actually, it's quite funny because uh, uh, two years ago, actually, the project had just started, so it's kind of nice for me now to tell you two years later what actually really happened that uh, uh, I didn't know about two years ago. 
So um, a, a really nice device, which actually has been used a lot as an example in AI. I mean, John McCarthy used the thermostat as an example of intelligence in a, in a, in a paper about 50, 50 years ago. Um, now, I'm not sure whether the thermostat is intelligent, but certainly in my view is not proactive. What a the thermostat does, if, uh, um, you know, for those of you who know how a thermostat works, you basically set the temperature, and when the temperature in, uh, in the ambience goes below the set temperature, the central heating uh, is switched on. Uh, a lot of people think that thermostat is like an accelerator. The more you put it, the more, but it's not like that. It's just, uh, it's just a, a stimulus response device. So this is a nice example of a reactive uh, device. A device that may or may not be intelligent, if we agree with John McCarthy, uh, is certainly reactive, but it's not proactive. It does not anticipate what can happen uh, in, uh, in my ambience, in, in my house. Uh, however, not uh, is all lost because uh, uh, two years ago um, at the University of uh, De Montfort, they, um, a group of uh, uh, guys uh, built uh, this um, uh, proactive heating controller, um, which I think is now, they, they now set up a company, I think you can probably buy it. And the nice thing about this heating controller is that uh, it learns about the, essentially the, the patterns of occupancy in the house. Um, and um, uh, basically, uh, from, from, from essentially, from experience, from the patterns uh, he learns, uh, uh, he predicts when uh, uh, hot water is needed, uh, when central heating is needed, etc. Yeah. Now, I'll certainly will never buy these things. I don't particularly want to delegate uh, uh, my central heating, uh, uh, let's say, program. In fact, you can actually program these, these, these things. The, the, the thing is, uh, you can override it, but you cannot program it, which is actually quite, you know, you really have to have a lot of faith in the technology. Uh, probably you can phone him and say, well, look, I'm coming home today a bit earlier, please, uh, you know, switch yourself on. Uh, but the bottom line is that this, this is, uh, uh, in, in our model, this is an example of proactivity in the sense that uh, it uh, learns from, uh, from behavior and therefore he, he tries to anticipate need, which is exactly the definition of proactivity. And this is um, basically one, uh, one example of, of um, a generic classes of uh, uh, proactive systems, which uh, in the literature are called uh, application proactive uh, systems, oh, sorry, application specific proactive systems, which is systems that know, uh, basically they're, they're like personal systems, they concentrate on a particular user, on a particular task, they learn a lot about that user and that task, and therefore they can anticipate needs. Uh, and a really nice example that um, uh, from the very, very, very beginning of the web was the work that uh, Harry Lieberman did uh, on Letitia. Uh, and basically Letitia was uh, um, a kind of browsing assistant. You will go through the web uh, and browse your pages, and Letitia will constantly suggest uh, other resources on the web that may be, that he, he, uh, Letitia thought that uh, um, could be useful for you on the basis of what you were, uh, uh, or, or your navigation and, and also history. I mean, in reality, actually, was really incredibly irritating to have this, this thing always suggesting new things that you didn't care about. But the, the, it, was, uh, it was interesting primarily because it was so early in the day of the web, etc. And if you want to do something even more annoying, I'll show you something incredibly more annoying, <laughs> which, which is uh, the the Microsoft uh, uh, paperclip, which again is a nice, uh, well actually is even less nice example of uh, application specific proactivity, but he is proactive, you know. Uh, he will annoy everybody in very, very proactive way, anticipating needs that uh, you didn't have, you, didn't, ne you never thought you had. And typically when you had those needs, you were in big trouble and you certainly didn't want to discuss with the paperclip. But this is what uh, a lot of proactive, uh, re uh, research on proactive uh, uh, systems is about. Uh, but as I say, that, um, we, we were really not so interested in uh, just building one particular system for one particular uh, task. But what we were interested in is really scenarios uh, um, like, as I say, the, uh, for example, like in a smart kitchen where you have all these different appliances, or even more a smart house, a smart house where you have lots of different appliances. And, uh, and you may have intelligence uh, as a result of the uh, um, ability of these appliances to cooperate with, with one another. So uh, uh, you can see from the picture, basically, the model is that in which you have, you know, you have a lot of smart products. These smart products typically are in an ambience, and these ambience, of course, uh, they, um, there may be policies that determine you know, who can be in this ambience, which tasks can be exposed, etc. Et et but essentially, the, the idea is that uh, um, cooperation is on a task-based, uh, is, is, uh, is centered on tasks. And of course, if you build an architecture to support uh, this, this cooperation, the architecture has to be to, to basically has to be domain dependent, uh, you know, so that for different ambiances uh, can be created and different smart products can be deployed for different um, uh, scenarios. So just to give you um, a slightly more uh, specific scenario, 
Uh, this is something that we did uh, um, um, by collaborating with Philips to some extent. They are very interested in these kind of smart kitchen appliances. Uh, for example, uh, oven that knows about your diet and uh, uh, th things like that. And uh, so we developed these, uh, we work on this uh, scenario which has uh, um, two elements, as a meal planning element and a shopping element. So basically there are two ambiences in the scenario. There is a home ambience in which you have a number of smart products that help you, for example, to, to manage your diet, uh, but also to do things like, for example, um, you organize a dinner with friends and you, you, know, you, you want to decide what, uh, um, what to cook. So there is a, a cooking assistant which has access to a huge uh, knowledge base about food and nutrients and also a huge knowledge base about recipes and also knows a little bit of your history and diet, etc. Et and can, can help you with, uh, with deciding what, uh, uh, what to cook. And then, of course, because we are talking about integrated smart products, um, so having a cooking assistant uh, that uh, helps you to decide the recipe is not necessarily, there is no productivity there. But the fact that, for example, the cooking assistant can interact with other appliances in the kitchen, for example, with the fridge, and the fridge can say, well, by the way, I understand that you, know, you share the task that you are actually organizing a meal, where well, I tell you that there are certain ingredients in, uh, in the fridge that are just about to expire, so you might actually save money and minimize waste by using these ingredients. Uh, and then, for example, you know, then the shopping list is produced and you have another device called the shopping assistant and you go to the supermarket and then the shopping assistant interacts with the supermarket agents, for example, by getting nice offers. But for example, another example of proactivity is also that uh, because the shopping assistant keeps track of your history and therefore that also helps the diet management. For example, he, he, even if you are not planning to buy something, the shopping assistant can alert you that, look, uh, you know, you normally tend to buy, uh, I don't know, sugar once a week. Today, uh, I'm told by the supermarket agents that there is a special offer, so you might want to add it uh, even if it's not uh, necess necessarily needed today. So this, this, kind of, this is a, an example of proactivity in a, in a nice scenario that I guess uh, more or less all of us, or at least uh, um, some of us who do go shopping in the supermarket are aware of. And finally, the, the other thing is that we, we want to do it for real. We don't just want to, to write a giant simulation on... Uh, uh, on, uh, on a server and uh, get it to, uh, get it to uh, um, uh, pretend to be uh, uh, smart devices, but we really want to have uh, these things running on uh, obvious uh, technologies like uh, uh, smartphones, uh, uh, tablets, and of course, uh, we, in, in the case of smart fridges, then they <coughs> you, they, they, the technology already exists actually to, um, to install these things within, uh, um, within the actual appliance. Okay. So if, if you are happy to, uh, with, with this uh, premise uh, and you're happy with the notion of proactivity as uh, um, a proactivity in a, in a network of collaborating smart products, then essentially proactivity becomes a, a task awareness. Um, proactivity, uh, as it says here, means the tasks are exposed in ambiences and smart products are then able to contribute to these tasks without explicitly the request from other uh, smart products. So you have a home ambience, you have a supermarket ambience, you have a uh, uh, ambience in a particular uh, work situation, certain tasks are created, they are shared a little bit like in the blackboard in the, in the previous talk, uh, and then uh, there you get different kind of cooperation, different kind of uh, uh, practice depending on, on the task. And as I say, the other, the other thing is by, by, doing, by having this approach, you don't actually require any, um, any controller. Uh, it's simply, you know, just like, in fact, in Blackboard system, is very much a, a very modular and flexible network of um, interoperating agents. Um, so hopefully, um, I mean, this basically repeats the, the main thing just in terms of uh, advantages. So the, 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 the advantage is that, you know, you have no control, you have this self-organized uh, integration. And, and of course, uh, this works basically whether the ambience is something like the kitchen, where typically you don't want to invite any foreign smart products in your kitchen, or the ambience is something more dynamic, for example, a supermarket in which the supermarket is happy for, uh, for uh, customers to use certain devices and uh, engage in uh, other cooperation with other um, users or with the supermarket itself. So what uh, then uh, is our framework like? Um, well, of course, we have smart products. Um, and uh, as uh, it says here, um, basically, we don't really distinguish so much. There is no distinction between hardware smart product and software smart product. You have, uh, um, if you have a cooking assistant running on a tablet PC, basically you have a software smart product. If you have a smart fridge, 
basically, you still have a software sm smart product that is the application inside the fridge, but because the, the fridge only has one uh, capability, then you can say, well, the fridge is smart. Um, and of course, cooperation is not just about problem solving, but it's also about sharing information. So, for example, in the case of the fridge, the fridge might not have any problem solving capability, but may be able to provide information in the context of meal planning. While meal planning itself is a very knowledge intensive task that requires something much more sophisticated than simply a smart fridge. Uh, so, these operate in ambiences in which you have um, um, different uh, smart products, uh, and also, as I say, uh, you have different uh, policies to determine who, who can be in the ambience, who can. Uh, share certain tasks, etc. Et of course, I, I won't have time to talk about the, the policies, but I, I, you can ask questions later, we can discuss it later. And, but the interesting thing about these, and again, for those, of, for those of you who know a little bit of knowledge acquisition, is that uh, we were actually able to reuse a lot of the work we did uh, um, in the 90s and up to about 2001, 2002 on um, uh, reusable components for uh, knowledge-based systems. Because the, uh, so essentially, in fact, the one way to look at this work was we, we, uh, we took uh, all the work we already know about um, uh, task-centric uh, task um, problem solving in which you have a, a cooperation between essentially different problem solving methods and you have this modularity, this distinction between task knowledge, problem solving and domain and uh, migrated these, uh, um, these um, uh, technologies in the new environments uh, where you have uh, uh, smart products and, uh, uh, and ambiences. So, uh, in fact, I can skip this one. So the, the, um, the very basic model, uh, let's say the basic ontological model, of course the ontology contains, I, I don't know, uh, <coughs> um, um, close to, uh, well, it contains several hundreds uh, uh, concepts. But essentially these are really the, the, the eight, nine that you really need to know. So you have an ambience. This ambience contains smart products. Each smart product can have uh, a number of capabilities. Well, the capability is basically uh, the ability to apply a particular uh, problem-solving method to a particular task. Uh, and in particular, there are two main capabilities, which is uh, the one to do with information supply and the one to do with problem-solving. In reality, there is a third, which is completely trivial, which is the ability to expose tasks, but we take that, that kind of vanilla capability that we assume everybody has. Um, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think as soon as I put, uh, as, I put uh, as soon as I say it's problem solving methods, you started. <laughs> Probably triggered a bad memory from 1995 or something like that. <laughs> um, so okay, well, I won't uh, you know I won't have time to to discuss the, this in detail, but basically. Um, we, have, um, uh, we have a large uh, network ontologies where the, the generic modules, which are really the important ones, uh, that define, uh, uh, there is a user side which defines all the HCI side, which I'm not really going to talk about. And then basically there is um, the generic process and product that together characterize uh, the, essentially the five elements, uh, uh, the five key elements of the ontology that I said before, ambiences, smart products, uh, um, task, uh, problem solving methods, and, uh, and domain knowledge. In fact, typical domain knowledge is actually in the application specific module. So for this, this, uh, this one show there is the hierarchy ontologies for this um, uh, smart kitchen scenario. And uh, um, I shall skip, uh, I'll skip this one. J this gives you a, a few more details because, uh, because basically, actually yeah, it might be useful to say something about the top level. So we reuse the time ontology from W3C um, and uh, crucially, we, we need to reuse the semantic sensor network ontology from W3C. Of course, a lot of these smart products need to acquire uh, information uh, through sensors. So it doesn't make sense to, to reuse the existing ontology from W3C. Now, because this ontology imports Dolce, actually, this is the advantage we can also reuse Dolce, for example, to characterize certain things like uh, um, a smart product, essentially, if you look on the left-hand side, the, the whole hierarchy of subclass of is a subclass of um, uh, an agent in Dolce, and capabilities um, are characterized as uh, types of qualities um, in Dolce. So basically, we, 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 uh, we, we got a lot of reuse out of these uh, uh, more generic ontologies. Now, um, so that, that's a little bit of overview of the kind of knowledge level of the ontologies and the representation of the concepts. Um, as far as the symbol level is concerned, uh, of course, one thing that, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one thing we want to do is to build it for real. Uh, that is to get basically these smart products to run on uh, uh, everyday devices. So we, we implemented a, um, uh, a task messaging protocol that um, basically is, uh, is a simplification contract net that allows these devices to cooperate in a, in a task-centric way 
Um, this is very kind of lightweight and works very, very efficiently. And in a sense, it can be seen as uh, the analog in the uh, smart products world of the brokers we had, uh, again, 20 years ago to, to do uh, uh, task, uh, uh, task-centric problem solving using problem solving methods by brokering alternative, pro uh, alternative problem solving methods for the same task. Um, as far as communication middleware, we have used MundoCall, which uh, has um, a lot of nice features that really map very nicely to those kinds of desiderata that I mentioned earlier on. So it supports uh, uh, different channels. That means it is very easy to, uh, belong, uh, yeah, to belong to different uh, uh, ambiences. Um, and uh, it also uh, supports uh, very nicely this, uh, uh, let's say, anarchic uh, model in which it's easy uh, for smart products to join and live in an ambience without any, the need for a centralized control. Uh, but actually, the, on the negative side, um, it, it does impose an overhead uh, uh, because uh, it's, um, I mean, th th these things are a little bit, uh, uh, I would say, delicate, especially, you know, the com you know, with new versions of Mund MundoCo, new version of Android, etc. Uh, et so we also have a version of the entire architecture which uh, uh, does not uh, go through MundoCo and, and directly implements the communication protocol. Uh, okay, I will uh, go through quickly and then I would like to show you actually uh, an actual demo. Uh, the other thing is that, as I say, we want these um, uh, smart products to be um, um, essentially uh, se semantic aware. Uh, so we did a lot of work on porting uh, semantic technologies uh, uh, to Android and now we have a nice solution that essentially allows uh, um, Android smartphones to have uh, uh, triple stores and to uh, support Sparkle endpoints. This was demonstrated, we, we gave a demo last year at uh, ISWC. Um, and also the other nice thing, because we, again, we are talking about uh, a distributed federation of uh, uh, smart products, we also did some work on supporting federated queries. So this, is all, uh, this was all nice side effects of having to go through all these uh, requirements from start to finish. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll give a, a quick demo. Uh, um, so hopefully you still remember the scenario is uh, meal planning, which then moves into supermarket ambience. Uh, of course, there is a very, um, a very strong uh, um, domain component because uh, as it turns out, there isn't uh, really a knowledge base out there that you can use uh, uh, that tells you, for example, it gives you the caloric information of food or nutri you know, the nutrients associated with food, etc. So we actually we did a large scale uh, data integration exercise by integrating information from different sources on the semantic web and putting together uh, a huge database of uh, information about food and also information about recipes together with the, the nutrients information, which is crucial for that, uh, for that management. Okay, so um, uh, I don't know actually how well can you see? That's uh, yeah, so you, can, you can see. Sorry? It's too far away. I can't. <laughs> the font from here is like 0 0.0001 yeah. pixel. So. Uh, okay, so this is the interface to the cooking assistant, and it doesn't actually look uh, um, anything uh, different from uh, most recommended system. Uh, basically, you know, you have various ways to, to parameterize your... Uh, um, your specification, uh, you know, you can say um, which, uh, which type of event you're organizing. Uh, you can specify preference for food. You can specify food that uh, um, you don't like. Of course, because uh, the system is aware about know some members of the family, certain people already know uh, dietary requirements, etc. Et One thing that actually makes it interesting uh, is that you have that uh, button about minimize food wastage. That essentially enables cooperation. If you click, uh, uh, if you press that button, as is the case there, uh, it means that uh, uh, you, you want uh, um, the cooking assistant to cooperate with other devices to minimize uh, food wastage. Um, and the interesting thing about this, again, for those of you who know about problem solving methods, is that uh, me planning a meal is, is a parametric design task. So we were basically you, you able to reuse uh, the problem solvers uh, for parametric design tasks, simply configure for this. Uh, for this uh, scenario. So if I get it uh, to run, there is a guy in a smart kitchen, as you can see there. And um, uh, okay, let me, uh, let me pause a tiny bit. Let's remove this hand. Okay, so basically the system has uh, given you a number, of, uh, uh, a number of options. As I say, this is done by a generic parameter design problem solver. And of course, you get uh, these, uh, these nice things you can rank by various criteria like, you know, you just want to be healthy, or is a special occasion, maybe you don't care about healthy, but you want to minimize preparation time. 
Uh, but the interesting one is, uh, for example, food uh, wastage. If you look at the one at the top, um, you get two leaves. It means that there are at least two items that you have in the fridge that you are using uh, for, um, for this particular meal. And, and also you have uh, another one, for example, is uh, what is called familiarity, which is, again, is uh, a cooperation with the shopping. The shopping assistant keeps track of what you buy. And, for example, you can uh, uh, maximize the use of items that you buy all the time because, it, of course, uh, uh, that's something that you might have to buy anyway. So th this is just a, a very uh, simple example uh, of um, uh, cooperation. So if you let the, the video run a little bit, so is, um, you can find more information about this, these, uh, these things, and then hopefully we will just move on to, to the next uh, he selects, yeah, he selects one particular meal plan and, uh, and then magically, um, again, through task and cooperation, the, the, the shopping, uh, ah, let, let me stop here. Uh, yeah, this is, for some reason, I put the shopping assistant behind the thing, so it looks like a magician that is really crap. That comes up. But basically, what, what has happened, and then now, you know, I have agreed to a particular meal plan, therefore a shopping list is created. He goes on the shopping assistant, uh, uh, as you can see there, actually, you can, the, the screen is good enough, you can see it. There are a couple of items that have been grayed out, and these are items that uh, um, have been um, um, uh, already in, um, in the house. But again, because you don't want this practice which uh, force you to do things you don't want to do, then the user is completely under user control. The user can say, yes, I want to buy these things anywhere, or otherwise I accept the suggestion uh, from uh, the integrated cooking assistant, uh, fridge, uh, and the shopping assistant. So in this case, I just, um, uh, the user that is me just accepts uh, what, uh, uh, what's happening. So I say yes. And then uh, um, magically, we find ourselves in a supermarket. <laughs> wasn't, that, uh, wasn't that quick? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty magic. <laughs> and. Uh, and, uh, okay, now you can see he's interacting with the supermarket agents and get offers through the supermarket agents. This is, uh, um, actually, uh, I, I mean, since so this is not so amazing, I just discovered there is a guy who got uh, 200,000 uh, pounds in venture capital fund to do exactly this thing, uh, which really uh, said, well, we already done it and nobody gave us any money. But <laughs> it's, uh, um, so in fact, actually, this is an area where actually people who are entrepreneurs can make quite a lot of money because there is, Okay, but uh, let me show you um, another example of proactiv uh, proactivity. So here I am in the supermarket, now I have my shopping list, etc. Et et and uh, let's suppose something changed uh, in the environment in, um, at home. Uh, for example, so here I'm just scrolling uh, the offers from the supermarket, when, uh, well, so I'm there happily uh, in my supermarket, and uh, something happens at home uh, in a second. Somebody, yeah, that was quite quick because, of course, uh, so somebody has removed the milk from the fridge. And, uh, <laughs> which is, isn't that typical. You go, you know, you say, okay, yeah, I don't need to buy the milk because the milk is at home. Uh, I think, Frank, you missed that. The, somebody removed the milk from the fridge. And, um, um, and of course, the, the nice thing about this, uh, this whole framework, because, uh, um, because the fridge has contributed to this task and the task is still open, and the shopping assistant is actually an in, in between the two ambiences. So the fridge is aware that has provided information to a task that is still open. Uh, and therefore, when uh, the milk uh, is removed from the fridge, the fridge can then uh, uh, send this message, say, well, the information I provided for this task is actually not correct anymore. And eventually, uh, an alert uh, uh, comes into my shopping assistant that basically say, well, look, uh, you know, the milk is not there. Do you want to add to your shopping list? Uh, and this is a, a, a another example of practiceness, which is to do essentially with, uh, uh, with this uh, kind of data-driven practice, but in a context in which there is this task awareness. I don't want every time there is a change in the world in my house to be ad, uh, alerted. Okay, I think I can, uh, I mean, I can just let the demo run, but I can finish here because I think we have 27 minutes. <laughs> We are a little bit late, but I think at least one question, maybe we can, we can get it. Uh, as far as I understand, I guess that we need to design 
lots of uh, different tasks to be able to deal with uh, not everyday tasks, but uh, most of the uh, of the tasks we have to do every day. Um, the system, because you 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 specify the different tasks and how the different systems cooperate and so on. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. So, I mean, the, 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 the way you, you, you can see it is essentially is, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, a complete application building framework. Um, so, um, so, for example, you know, for, for this particular scenario, what we had to do was to, um, yeah, to define the tasks in the kitchen, to define the tasks uh, in the supermarket, and then uh, to uh, define smart products which had the, the, the right capabilities. Um, but that's actually not, uh, I mean, you know, we're, we're not, uh, I mean, here there was a kind of a parametric design element, which actually was a little bit more complex in terms of processing, but actually we reuse, a, a, you know, a, a problem solver we already have. Otherwise, you know, we are talking about reasonably, um, you know, micro functionality. But the, the, ni the nice thing is certain things you get for free. For example, these, uh, these uh, proactiveness as, uh, as a result of uh, task cooperation, and also this proactiveness as a result of being aware or, for example, what you have contributed to a task and then, you know, monitor your environment. So, yes, so the answer is yes, but I think uh, at the same time, uh, you know, if you try and build an application like that without our framework, you would be, I can guarantee, you would be a, a lot of pain. So, let's thank Enrico for this again. Frank, you missed the, the free.